basically? Yeah, uh, trained full past uh, four or five days, so finally over the hump. Um, it was just a weird, you know, I think I strained it in Portland, uh, and then we had a bye weekend, uh, and then my back went out, spasm, so I didn't train. Came back, trained hard, probably a little bit too soon, felt it again, uh, ended up getting an MRI, figure out what exactly is going on, so it's just a small strain in there. Uh, coming back and ramping it up a little too fast, so I'll be sad for the last time. Take it a little bit slower, um, ease into practice, do my fitness off to the side, and then back in full training today. So, feeling good? Sure. Were you close for Chicago? It sounded like Coach said that there was a chance that he thought Yeah, that he it was go. close, but uh, I think it would have been a little bit too soon, um, just knowing that Monday and Tuesday were the first times that I really had a hard training since the Portland game. Uh, so, in saying that, um, Desperate times, maybe, yeah. Uh, you know, last game of the season, if we're fighting them, you know, really make the playoffs at that point, yes. Um, but at the at the risk of missing the rest of the season for the Chicago game, it, it wasn't worth it. Um, so just make sure that I'm ready to go uh, for Sunday. What are your impressions of how the squad's been playing while you've been out? Assume you've been yeah, up great. Stuff. I mean, battling. Obviously, backs are, are against the wall in an unfamiliar position. So, you know, it had to come down to a do or die time to, to start clicking. and. Uh, you know, the team has done that fighting 90 minutes, um, you know, watching it from above. It's it's fun to watch. You know, guys are playing for each other. Um, no tackle is uh, is too hard. No ball is too far to chase. You know, it's that point in the season. Um, so there's no no reason to rest now. You know, it's our first time sitting above the red line. But, you know, in 48 hours, it could be taken away. So we got to be prepared for a battle and we got to keep pushing to uh, the last four games of the season. You've touched on it before, but how has Nico impacted this team? What will you guys miss most from him not being on the field on Sunday? Yeah, I think you look at uh, you know a lot of teams that have that creative midfielder. You know, when Vancouver is missing Morales, it's a different team. Uh, when Valeri's out for Portland, it's a different team. Um, you know, you can go list after list after list. Gio, a left-footed creative guy, when he's not in for LA, they miss a little bit of creativity. So um, you know, he's, at times he puts a team on his back, and he understands the responsibility of you know. His stature, uh, most importantly, he uh, and he wants that, you know, which is cool. You know, he understands that he's a DP and he's uh, he's meant to produce and he's done that. So, what more can you ask of the guy? Um, so we'll miss obviously the creativity, um, you know. But I think Ivanchitz is deadly on set pieces as of late as well. So he'll get his run in, in, in the run of play and pinging some balls in the box with, uh, you know, Torres, Chad, hopefully myself, uh, potentially Nelson, Jordan, who knows. Um, so we give ourselves a, a fighting chance, but. As a group, we know that one player, we can't rely on one player to, to push us into a position. It's got to be you know, the, the entire roster. So once one is out, one has to step in and take over the duties. And playing away from home, we've got to play a gritty game. Uh, and if it comes down to that, you know, we just have to get a result. Sure. Do you expect yourself to be ready for Sunday to play? Yeah. Do you see yourself maybe in the midfield now that there's a gap? Yeah, yeah nowhere else to play. Everybody's played so well. Uh, I've got to uh, potentially plug in somewhere in the midfield, so I think we'll go over that uh, tomorrow or, or Sunday and see see where I fit in with the team. Um, if it's off the bench, who knows yet. Um, so, yeah, just want to help the team any way we can. Four games left uh, to, to make the playoffs. What do you think of the progression of Jordan Morris this year? Is there anything different about him at this point in the season compared to earlier? I mean, the story's always the same. We build somebody up so much and then when he doesn't score a hat trick in the first five games why is he not producing why is he not producing okay you know he missed a couple chances he's a young forward coming straight out of college his first first experience in mls it's it's difficult you know and and he has uh shied away from or not shied away he stayed away from from reading too much into it um, he's got a good head on his shoulders and you know he has a team and coaching staff that supports him uh and at the right time now he's matured to the point where uh, he's extremely dangerous now and now he is the focal point up top for us in, in scoring goals so um, in saying that he's welcomed the responsibility he's comfortable now he's fit he's, he's flying right now so that is our uh, best case scenario for Jordan right now um, and you know we stuck behind him 100 percent didn't bench him didn't you know he wanted him on the field because no matter what if he's not scoring goals he's drawing two defenders away um, so in saying that he's uh, he's become the focal point for our team and in in how we attack along with Nico so um, happy for him number one uh, but more impressed by the way that he's uh, carried himself throughout all the all the Touch base a little bit on this, but I'm wondering um, how important is it for the next four games for the team to continue to trust the process, mm -hmm. not get too up, not get too low. Yeah, I mean the same. It, that was the story of the season. Is when things weren't going going well for us, was not 
not dwelling on what was going wrong, more focusing on what we can do to, to get out of that slump and get on the right track. So now we found ourselves in a good run of form. Okay, well, we got to keep it going because everything we've done in the past two months can be taken away in the snap of a finger. So I think everybody realizes that just as, just as fast as it can turn around one way, it can turn around the other way. So we've got to continue to ride the wave with four games left and push ourselves to continue to play well into the playoffs because right now is important, yes, but once that last match day comes against Salt Lake, we see where we are. If we're in a good position, we got to continue it. We can't rest no matter what the game is because you want to hit the playoffs at the right time. We've hit it. Most of the time we hit it flying high where we're, you know, we've already made the playoffs three months ago. We know that we're probably going to be in. And, well, you know, one time I can remember was barely eking in the playoffs and getting destroyed by Portland. Um, so. That was a bit of an anomaly to me, but we weren't playing our best at that point. We eked into the playoffs. So we've gone at it both ways, and now we're starting to hit our stride. But everybody knows, just like I said, it, it can be taken away as soon as it's given to us. So uh, we got to stay focused, come out here and work, and, and be ready for a battle, knowing that we've got a, you know, a week and a half off to, to regroup. So everything's got to be left on the field on Sunday. If you guys do complete this turnaround and get into the playoffs, would it be any sweeter at all to knock Portland off in the process, or do you care about that at all? I can't. It doesn't matter. I mean, they smashed us twice this year. Um, you know, we beat them a good result at home twice on the road. They, they smashed us, so we got to find ourselves in the playoffs first, and we're worried about what happens after that. As a leader, how, I mean, how, how much are you look forward to being – leader and helping being on the field I know you're, yeah. you're helping in the locker room. you always want to play you you're here because you want to play in games that's number one and whatever my role is uh, for the end of the season um, you take it in stride and I, there's no you know if I don't start if I do start whatever position it is I don't know yet so there's no point in putting your head down and and, uh, and you know playing the pity card it's now it's most importantly, you want to get this team into the playoffs, and whatever your role is, your role is at this point. You can't be you can't be choosy at this point. Um, you know the team's playing as well as it is. You want to be involved. You want to be involved in the in the process. You want to be involved in turning the season around and making the playoffs. And whatever that whatever your role is, your role is. And is that the duty of being a captain? Because how you react to these things really look goes on the team as well. Anybody, uh, there's I could name you know ten guys that are fitting to be captain on this team, um, and surprising a number of guys. Not surprising, but. In years past, maybe certain guys wouldn't have stepped up and put the team on their shoulders. Um, and in, in this season, guys have matured a little bit more, and they have. Um, maybe in years past, things weren't going right, and it was past the, past the buck, past the duty. But this year's different. Things aren't going right. Give me the responsibility. I want to help. I want to, I want to turn this team around. And that's the difference uh, when you, what you see in a, in a little bit older players, veteran players who have been through the process before, um, who have invested a lot into this team. Um, you want to see it be successful, the, the continued success of the team. So that starts with being a veteran. And if you're captain on the weekend, okay, you can take the team on your shoulders, but there's other guys on the field that will also step up and when the time is right to, uh, to lead. We learned last week that Clint Dempsey won't come back for the rest of the season. What, is your, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, nice obviously, uh, you know, his health is number one. Um, you know, when he came back, he was so happy to be back out here after the first procedure, just being back out and touching the ball. Um, you could tell that it's a it's a massive uh, part of his part of his life, um, and to have a a diagnosis where you can't play anymore because of because of your heart is uh, is tough. A, a muscle injury is, is one. A surgery is another. You know, you're going to come back. Um, you have a timetable, but for this, it's it's a bit of an unknown for us. Um, I think we're in the same boat as you guys. So um, disappointing, you know, just in the fact that he's a massive part of our team. But as I, you have to emphasize that, you know, his health is number one. Um, so unfortunate. I mean, I could give you all the words in the world to describe the, the situation. Um, so, you know, you just hope that he gets better and, he, and he's a big part of our team for next year.